let's get down to it. Now, the other tool that we'll need is a wrench. Now, this is just a, this is a simple wrench right here. All we basically need to do is be able to grab onto this nut that we have holding the mower blade in. So let's say, let's take a close up look at what that nut looks like right here. Um, you can see right in the center there, there's our mower blade, and there is a nut right there that I've got my wrench set to. And all I gotta do here, is get that wrench on top of that nut right here. I'm gonna hold the blade in place here and I'm going to unscrew that from our mower blade. And once I've got that nice and loose in there, I can get in there with my fingers and I can unscrew that blade from the base of our mower here. So keep going here. You can see there's still a little bit of green underneath this mower from when we mowed the lawn the other day, but no worries there. So you're gonna to wanna to hold on to this nut. There's also a locking washer on this nut. You wanna hold on to both of those there. I'm gonna leave that right there so I can always find it here. Now, this is the mower blade here, 17 inches wide here, but you notice the way the mower blades work is that you really only need this sort of outer area for the cutting there. And then the reason is, is that because this cuts in a circle, it cuts all around. You don't actually have to have the whole blade doing a ton of cutting here. And you can see right over here, we have two main cutting areas right here. And then on the other side, sort of the mirror image right here. Now notice the blade is black, but the cutting edges are silver. And the reason is that the blade has a protective coating on it and the cutting edges, as they get sharpened, that protective coating gets worn away. We're actually gonna use that to our advantage right here to sharpen our mower blades. Now this is actually not a dull mower blade. This is actually relatively sharp because this is fresh out of the box here. Um, when I say relatively sharp, this is actually a very, now that I'm touching it here, feels like a very nice sharp mower blade. We only, we, we've only used this particular mower here a couple of times um, from the studio here, but we can get a quick sharpen on both of these blades here in general. So, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the basic, the basic tr way to get that mower blade sharpened here. So you can see right here, I've got that nice edge here. What I'm actually going to start off doing, I've got a Sharpie here, and this is all you need, really. You need a Sharpie, a file, a wrench, a board with a screw in it, and that's it. It's as simple as that to get everything sharpened up here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that Sharpie, and let's just take a quick look here. I'm going to mount this in the vise here so we can take an easy look at it. Mount that in the vise right there. Let's see. Let's take a quick. Uh, let's take a quick look right over here at the edge of our mower blade. All I'm going to do here is I'm just going to color in that blade with a sharpie right here, and this is really just going to tell me where I'm hitting with the file. And you'll see exactly what I mean in just a second here. So I don't have to do the whole thing, but you know you can. You can just color that whole bit in there, and this is going to give me a rough idea of what I'm getting at with the file here. So that's all covered in Sharpie there. It's still a little reflective because the Sharpie is going to be a little more reflective than the, uh, than the matte paint that we have on here. But that's going to give us a good guide for when we're sharpening here. Now, a couple of different ways to sharpen. Um, you want this supported here because essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take our file here. We're going to run this across this blade here. Now, when we're doing that, we can either file this way, we can file down against the table here. This is another way to do it, to mount this to the edge of a bench and file it that way. You get a lot of support that way, and that is generally the way that I would recommend it. So what we're actually going to do right over here, I'm just going to leave that right there. I'm going to grab a couple of clamps over here, and we're going to clamp this down to our workbench right here so we can get that nice, easy filing. I had some I had some clamps in here. Looks like they where'd they go? We definitely had some clamps in the back over here. Come on, clamps. Where, where, oh where did my little clamps go? Well, we definitely know that we have one clamp in here, and one clamp actually should be enough. So we're gonna grab this clamp right here and open that up right there. And what I'll do is see where this fit right here. There we go get this clamp nicely mounted here to our mower blade. I just need it to be held very firmly in position here. We don't want it moving around there. There we go. All right, so I've got the mower blade clamped down here. So now when I push against it with the file here, nothing's going to happen. And let's get really close up on this section right here. I think we really need to see that here um, for everyone to understand what's going on. You can see how this is all now blacked out by the uh, by the by the sharpie there but really what we need to do here is we need to take all that sharpie off so the way we're going to use this file here and this is uh this is what we call like i said a single cut file meaning that it only cuts it only has one row of uh, it only has one row of little slices through it that make it sort of abrasive here now you can do the same thing actually with a stick 
and some sandpaper on it, but the file is gonna cut much faster. This is definitely the way to do it. A lot of folks like to do this with a grinder. This is, in my opinion, just as quick and just as effective, um, and it is so much simpler. You don't need a big, expensive, heavy grinder, and you don't certainly need to bring your mower blade into the, um, you don't need to bring your mower blade into the uh, in, in, into the into the into a, like a hardware shop or anything like that to, to have them do it uh, all the time. So one thing that we're going to think about when we're using the file here, files cut on the push. So we're going to push. We're going to use two hands. We always want to make sure because when you buy files, they don't come with handles. So we always want to make sure we have a handle, whether it's just a piece of wood that we jam the file end into or something like this. We've got a grip there. You always want to make sure you have a handle. That's a nice important safety tip when you're working with a file here. Now I've got the gloves on just to protect my hands from any uh, filings here as well as to get a good grip on this file. Let's just take a quick look here at the blade here and we'll show you exactly what we're going to do. Now, when you're using the file here, you can use the file in this direction here, and we'll know we'll cover this amount of space there. But really what we wanna do is we wanna do two angles at once. We're actually gonna go pushing down, or we're gonna actually push across at the same time. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look down the side here, and I'm gonna get the file lined up with the blade here. And the most important thing is that I can see where we're filing away. And that's what the Sharpie is for. So as you see right there, I pulled those passes there. You can see that little bit of silver coming out here. So that's really what's important there. I'm trying to match the angle of what I see here, but really what I'm trying to do here is make sure that I file away till all that Sharpie is gone. And it's less important up here. It's more important down here at the edge, the actual cutting edge that we get all that Sharpie gone right there. So just go across there until it's all gone. Take light passes. You see right here, I'm only pushing on the push. I'm only uh, cutting on the push. I'm not dragging the file back. You just want to cut on the push there, just like that. Make sure that we're getting all of that away. Try and be relatively even with it. Keeping an eye on things here. There we go. So relatively even strokes there. And there we go. So that, as you can see right here, is a nice, shiny, cut, new, fresh cutting edge. And what's great about this method right here is, look at that, it only took me a couple of seconds to do. So very fast to do with a file. Now take a look right here though. This is the one important thing when you do your mower blades is that you always wanna do this on both sides because take a look at what's happening here when we take this mower blade. Now, we may not have taken off that much of material there, but we know the side of the blade that I took material off, which is this side of the blade here. Now, if I put this on this little screw here, what this mower blade does is it balances. And take a look here. This is something that's really, really important. So when I put this on here, the first thing that we're gonna see it do is this side is going to lean down because there's less material on this side, it's lighter. So as soon as I put this down, Look at that. You see how this tilts down on that side first? See how it's balancing and trying to say, hey, this side is heavier than this? It's because we took a little bit of material off on this side. So now all we have to do is we have to match it on the other side. So very, very simple. We'll just put this down right here. We're going to do the exact same process on the other side of our mower blade here. Now, we don't need to go. I think a lot of folks out there, if you are into the world of sharpening, if you've sharpened a lot of knives up and stuff like that in the past, you'll know that uh, you'll know that a file leaves a relatively coarse cut. Well, I'll tell you this, when it comes to things like mower blades, when it comes to things like chainsaws and axes, something with a big amount of power behind it, like the 500, like the 670 watt brushless motor in this, uh, in this mower right here, that this is going to be well sharp enough and really gives you a really, really powerful cutting edge right there. In fact, I can feel it with my thumb right now. This is really sharp here. Now here's what I'm gonna do once again, we'll walk you through it for the second blade, for the second side of the blade right here. We're going to draw that line over the, uh, over the edge right there of our mower blade here to give us that once again, black Sharpie line covering up that uh, covering up that exposed blade there so that we know where we're hitting with the file. That way we know we're getting a nice, even continuous um, filing job done right here. So we're gonna definitely cover that all up. So that's all nice and sharpied right there. As you can see there, we're gonna put our Sharpie away here. We're gonna clamp down our mower blade to the edge of a table here. Or well, like I said, what you can do is actually you can mount it in a vise just like this. this is another way to do it here. In fact, we can try that here just to show you exactly what it looks like. I'm gonna mount it nice and low on the vise here. 
We want this to be as supported as possible here. So we don't want to make it super tall. Otherwise, it's going to be flopping around everywhere. You're going to see why I prefer against the table as opposed to the vise here. But we can do it in the vise here, um, just mounted low like that. And here, once again, you can see that black Sharpie mark right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the file to it. I can look down right here. In fact, actually, one of the good things about this position, I can actually see the angle that I need to hit this way to get that nice straight uh, that nice straight uh, line there. And what I'm going to do is with two hands here, remember file has to have a handle on it. Single cut file for that nice fine sharp edge right there. Just going to push not only this way, but also down. So it's going to be motions like that until I take off. And you can see how you see how this bends back when I put the when I put the weight on it. That's why I tend to prefer to do it up against a table there. It really makes it nice and even there. But we'll we'll, we'll make it suffice here. Make sure we're hitting all of that there. File definitely likes to make some squeaky noises when it can there. Get into that tight spot there. There we go. So there we go. I've got a nice straight edge here. I'm actually, I'm able to look right down on top of it and actually look at that edge here. So it looks nice and continuous there. So it's a nice position, but without anything behind it, you can definitely see that blade flexes and that offers a little bit of trouble every now and then. You're not really taking off so much material on these blades though. So no real issue there. So once again, now we go back to our board with a screw in it. Let's clamp that up right there. And can lay this in here and we'll see. Ooh, I nailed it on the first time. Look at that. I offered that up there and it's not moving at all. It's not offering one way more than the other. It's just very, very lightly bouncing back and forth, just about evenly between the two points there. So that's pretty much a perfect balance for this blade. And that's really what you're looking for. Cause you know, normally, like I said before you saw it, it was trying to, it was really tilting that way. But you see, if I push it that way, look what happens. It rocks itself right back to center here. And that's really the value of the screw in the board technique right here. Whether it's a screw, whether it's a nail, whatever it may be. Um, that's a really, really good sign right there that we've got a perfectly even blade here. And now both edges are freshly sharpened. Wow, I can really feel the edge on all of that there, even through the gloves here. So we'll undo that. And now this blade is ready to get reinstalled on the mower. Um, now, one thing to note with a mower blade like this, you do want to be wearing gloves, particularly while you're sharpening there. Not only do you not want the files, the metal shavings in your hand, but now my hands are nice and protected from the sharpness of this blade. Now, one thing you want to be sure of as well is the rotation of your mower, so uh, of your mower blade. So on our mower blades, they're actually, uh, you can see right there on the blade itself, there's some markings here that we're going to follow that really help us uh, identify the way that we're going to use this. So you can see right there, we've got a directionality of the way that it spins. And you can see here, because we read these markings, we know that this is the part of the blade that we want to see when we install it. So down over here on the locking on the locking piece right there we know we can see we can see right here that we have that nice directionality to it um, and then we're going to offer this right up here just like that and that's going to be how we're going to lock our blade in and that way we see our blade spins this way so what i'm going to do here is throw in that nut and here's another important reason that you want to wear the gloves when you lock this blade in you do have to grab the blade after you tighten this up here. Now there's no need to get this massively super tight. You just want it nice and tight right there for that nut to really squeeze in here. So I'm going to grab my wrench here. I'm going to grab the blade here. Um, just make sure that we're going to fit there. There we go. Just going to tighten this up here a couple of times here until I really feel it snug up. Yep. There we go. That's it. And that's all we need to do. And now we have a sharpened blade. And I'll tell you folks in, what was that? You know, maybe 10, 15 minutes at the most right there. We took a dull mower blade and made it brand new sharp right like that with, you know, a small amount of tools there. We're talking about a file. We're talking about a wrench. We're talking about a Sharpie. And we're talking about some sort of clamp like we have right here. And that's all we need to get that mower blade going. No need for a big heavy grinder. Now you can do it with a grinder. Grinders are much more aggressive. They spin that, uh, they spin that gritty wheel around. And you know, when you're using a grinder, it's a lot easier to unbalance the blade. Oh, and that is the other thing that you do need with the mower. Um, just a board, you know, it doesn't have to be a wide board like this, a two by four will do with a screw in it, just anything, a nail, anything for it to hang off of so you can see what the balance looks like on that blade.
And you can see right here, we have a, a mower that is ready to go. So very simple, very easy to get things sharpened up and ready to go for your mower here. So I love that. That's a quick little tip there to get everyone back in the game when it comes to mowing their lawn. And again, this goes for any lawnmower out there, but you can see how easy it was, particularly here with the Sunjo, um, how easy it was to get that sharpened uh, all the way up there and get that right back into the running segment there, right back into the world of cutting the grass as quickly as possible. Now, one of the other couple of things that we could talk about with the mower here and maybe in you know reference specifically to what we were doing on Friday were a couple of things that we were thinking about as we were mowing that lawn. Um, first thing to think about is cutting height. For example, now a lot of folks out there, um, you know, they're always questioning, you know, how tall do you want to, how tall do you really want to cut your grass? And here's the general rule: depending on how tall those blades are, you, uh, the, the blades of grass are, you want to cut underneath about a third of blade height off of there before you're cutting too much. Um, so depending on if you want really tight, low grass there, you got to do that in, you got to do that in waves, you know, little bit by little bit, so that you're not over, uh, so that you're not over sort of harming those blades of grass there by cutting off more than two thirds of the height of your grass blades there. Um, about a third is really what you want to aim for. So depending on how tall you have them, let's say you have three inch tall grass there. Um, if you want to cut it shorter than that, cutting it down to two inches is about where I would go. Um, and then if you want to get really, really short all the way down to an inch in blade height there, you're gonna have to do that in sort of sequential passes over time. Give them a couple of days for it to uh, resuscitate a little bit and give it a little while for that water to seep back in there. Now, when you are cutting your grass, another great little hack here, or a little great tip there is to make sure that you you do things in sort of alternate in, in sort of properly alternating patterns um, in fact why don't we get the whiteboard here so we could do a little uh, do a little tool lesson for everyone out there um, let's let's uh, let's see I've got the whiteboard over here I think we just need the I think we'll just need the marker for it as I reach for our whiteboard all right we'll just clean off our whiteboard right here all right thank you very much Thank you very much. Hand from the side of the camera, our producer Hunter there. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so here's uh, here's the little mowing pattern sort of uh, idea. So let's say that this is your lawn, very rectangular lawn that we have right there, or oblong lawn. Um, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off, let's say we start you know, mowing in this sort of pattern right here. So we'll go that way, we'll go this way, we'll go that way, and we'll go this way and that way and lastly this way all right so you can see here we're going back and forth back and forth we'll get nice and close on that so everyone can see exactly what i drew there with my little uh, my very very how should i say this is a very technical drawing right here so as you go back and forth you're going to go left and right obviously you're going to do little rounds there you're going to whip around here and keep turning as you go left and right there so let's say that's week one that we're mowing our lawn here well on week two Rather than going that same direction again, and when you are going those, when you are doing those little uh, those little laps there like that, you do want to make sure that you're over overlapping about a third of your cut there, so you don't end up with little mower lines. That way, you end up getting every bit of grass there. But let's say we're doing that same lawn here. The second time we do it, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna go up and down, and we're just gonna oppose whatever we did before. So we're going to. go in this direction. And hopefully everyone can see what I mean there. Um, you're gonna go this way instead of horizontally. And the reason, I realize that just looks like a snake there. <laughs> but the reason that you're gonna do that is that way you don't embed those lines that you're pushing the grass through. In fact, you want to keep that grass up. You want that. You want to keep that grass sort of available to the sun and all that. And you also don't want to sort of impress like a grid pattern in there. So that's gonna be week two. Now week three, you're gonna change it up one more time. And this is sort of this is sort of the one where it gets just a little harder to sort of imagine here. But once again, we'll do our little uh, we'll do our little uh, lawn there. And this time we're going to go this way. So we're gonna go corner to corner here, or we're gonna go diagonally across. And the reason that you're going to do this is once again to remove any patterns that you're laying down in the grass by mowing things up there. So having the 
left, right, up, down, crisscross, applesauce method of mowing your lawn there. You can keep your lawn looking very, very consistent and very equal across all fronts there, which is something that I think is a really, really important thing, um, a really, really important thing to do overall. This is one of those great ways to keep things properly cut up here. This is one of those great ways to keep things looking great in your lawn overall. So that's one of those just little tips there when you're cutting the lawn, you know, again, so you want to keep those, uh, you want to keep those things in mind there. You don't want to cut too much grass off. Um, you want to keep a sharp mower blade. I mean, sharp tools are all about uh, getting the work done better, getting the work done safer as well. You know, when it comes to a sharp mower blade, that's one of those things that cut, that helps you cut through some of that tougher grass. If you have, depending on the species of grass that you have, you're talking about tougher grasses, um, that mower blade being very sharp is going to help you um, in terms of giving you that much more efficient cut there. So having all these options here, having all these uh, having all these choices here, when it comes to getting the work done, it's so so uh, it's so so important to have all of that available at your fingertips. Now, in this case right here, you can see what I've got in front of me is our 17 inch lawnmower, and this is a beast of a lawnmower. You can check it out on snowjo.com. It's a great way to get things cut up. I believe it is on a great great deal right now. Um, and one of the great things about this mower here is that we're getting the work done without the hassle of gas. As you can tell, this is a lightweight mower here. We're not worried about a lot of weight here. This is easy to lift up. As you can see right there, I was able to put it on the table, able to take the blade off, able to sharpen things up there in just moments right here. And what's great about this is that sharpening up the blade is the only real maintenance I need to do here. I don't need to worry about, you know, any motor maintenance, no gas maintenance or anything like that. And you can see, look at this, look at how compact this holds up to be. And you know, what's great about this compared to your gas mower it's not going to take up a whole section of your draw of your uh, garage there now you can store this up on a shelf. It's nice and lightweight enough. It's very, very convenient to grab. It does have a six position height adjustment on it, which is uh, three, uh, three, all the way up to three inches high and all the way down to one inches at the lowest right there. Um, you can see right here, it's got a nice gear shift style over here. We can see if we can see that from our second camera angle. Um, let's, uh, we're going to, we're going to twist this right or, or a little more there. I got to see my, my, my producer giving me a, a little hand signals there. Um, there we go. So you can see that little gear shifter right there. There we go. We can see it right there. Now this is pretty easy to adjust that height on. Um, all you have to do is push this in. You can push this down or pull this back up there to give us that full three inch height difference there. So this is half inch increments that you have here. Really nice to be able to cut your grass that way. Now we can bring this uh, back to its little profile mode here. It does come with a nice large 11 gallon collection bag that does snap into the back here but what i have in it right now is the mulching plug this is another great tip for everyone out there if you're just doing maintenance cuts on your lawn and you're cutting anything less than a third of that uh, of that blade height when it comes to your grass this is a great tool to utilize what this does is it stops those grass clippings from shooting out of the back here into your collection bag but it actually gives you it actually gives you this little system right here that allows you to plug that into the back there and as you can see actually if we flip this upside down here you can see on the inside that actually stops those clippings from leaving the mower here there's no output on the back here now um, that's right you can see right there it is just the black void of, uh, of plastic there, um, which helps protect everything. Now we can pull that out. You can see how that opens things back up there. You can see my shirt through. You can see everything behind it here. And then we'll drop that back in. You can see that plugs that up. Now, what's important about that is that that keeps all the grass clippings that you're cutting there inside the drum of this mower here. And what ends up happening is all, the, all those clippings get recut by the blade a bunch and a bunch and a bunch. And then that feeds back into your lawn and becomes essentially mulched grass. So that's a way to mulch in those grass clippings in a really nice way. So if you're just doing the maintenance cut and you're getting very fine bits of grass um, and you're getting very fine bits of grass cut off there, it's a really great way to take those fine bits, make them even finer and use them as material that feeds into your lawn really makes this mower a powerful, powerful, powerful tool to get things looking absolutely great there. Now, uh, the price of this mower right now on that uh, on that amazing discount right here is a really great value. Let's pop up that price for, for me once more so I can um, so I can announce it to everyone out there um, because it's a great deal on Sojo.com. This is $132.99, and that is with two of our four amp hour batteries right now. So that's two of... Uh, 
two of these batteries right here. These are our high capacity four amp hour batteries here to power up this mower. Both of these come in the kit here with a dual port charger and this mower for, for wow, that's $132.99. That's an incredible deal going on at snowjo.com for it. So go ahead and head over to snowjo.com to take a look at a mower like this so that you also can get out there and easily get a lawn mowed. And I will tell you, you know, if you notice in the video of mowing that lawn, we were mowing on a hill and boy, was I happy to be using a mower that was not that heavy. Uh, this thing weighing in at less than 30, less than 35 pounds here was so nice. Uh, not having to push something big and heavy up a hill there and making it very easy to maneuver there. Very easy to lift up the tail of this, pivot this into those tight spaces and push it along there. And of course it was nice and quiet. We weren't waking up the neighbors with the big heavy gas noises there. This has got that nice, powerful 670 watt brushless motor in there. So it's a nice and quiet way to really trim things up. This is one of uh, my favorite ways to get the lawn cut particularly for that size of lawn right there this is the perfect mower um this is a really great way to get that to get that lawn looking absolutely gorgeous so easily so really great design 24 vx to 17 lm 132.99 on snowjo.com with those two 24 volt batteries and the dual port charger that's a great great that's a great great value for this mower right now this is a time to look into it now uh yeah so we answered the questions about sharp oh so we, we showed off how to sharpen the mower we talked a little bit about the i want to mow your lawn organization that was an amazing thing that we were able to do last friday again a big thank you out to them uh, a big thank you to everyone else out there who uh who helped mow lawns and, and volunteer for it it was such an important thing to help everyone out there get out there and get that work done um, and you know anything that we can do to make that easier, you know that's why we're so happy to uh, to gift the lawnmower to them as well as to gift them a string trimmer. Um, this is just one of those things we're so happy to be able to be involved in. And you know honestly, it was incredibly fulfilling to uh, to help take care uh, to help take care of a lawn ourselves. And uh, you know not just be able to show that off and you know get some footage and all that kind of stuff. That's nice. But the most important thing was that we were able to help out somebody who needed it. Um, and that made me incredibly, incredibly happy. So to me, you know, sort of regardless of everything else, that is the reason that uh, Friday was a spectacular success of a day. So um, I think we've uh, we've had a fun time here talking about mowers in general, talking about everyone getting their lawn mowed up overall. Um, this has just been a really cool uh, moment here to be able to share what we were able to do last Friday, but also to share some tips and tricks with you on mowing your lawn. Now, I do want to say uh, a big thank you to everyone out there for watching the show. If you ever have any questions, if you ever have any thoughts about what you want to learn about um, when it comes to any of the tips or tricks, when it comes to doing any of the DIY tasks in your yard, in your garden, we want to hear from you. Drop a comment there down in this uh, down in this uh, down in this video right here. We want to know what you're thinking about. We want to know what questions you have. So let us know. Drop that comment and uh, we want to hear from you folks. Alrighty, I want to say again a big thank you to everyone out there for watching. Big thank you to everyone out there for hanging out with us here. Um, now before we uh, before we kick off here, um, hopefully we will see you all soon. I think we're also live on TikTok as well. So uh, hello to all the folks on TikTok as well. And thanks so much to you folks also watching. Um, and thank you to everyone out there on YouTube for watching us here at the Go With Joe channel. Be sure to keep up with the channel. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. And if you're watching on TikTok, be sure to you know click all the press all the diamond buttons and all the and all the stars and all the likes and all that kind of stuff. Click all the social media things that you know make us happy here. We appreciate it. We certainly do, and we appreciate you folks showing up. All right, thank you folks, and we'll see you all in the next stream.